Hi everyone, welcome to our overview of eye tracking video. Hopefully this is a nice summary of the basics of eye tracking, as well as some of the ways to set up an eye tracking task. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the study settings for eye tracking and we'll talk about these a little bit. So I'm in the study settings tab. Specific features of eye tracking are going to be found all the way to the right on the experiment features tab or column. So scrolling down a little bit, you can see that I have activated eye tracking. I am using the version two lab advanced eye tracking. That's what we recommend. And you can also change the calibration of the eye tracking. So calibration is going to occur um, right when the participant starts the study. So the system will check their webcam, make sure everything is good to go. They will select what webcam they'd like to use if there's more than one option, and then they will do this calibration. So we have four options. You can do a long but most accurate calibration, which is gonna be eight minutes. Intermediate length and good accuracy, which is five. Short length and okay accuracy, which is three. And very short but less accurate, which is less than a minute. You can also choose if you want dots or animal icons. And we have, as you can probably guess, an infant friendly mode, which is going to choose the animal icons and the very short and less accurate eye tracking. Remember, if you deselect infant friendly mode, you do have to go back and click your original settings, or you can leave them up to you. We can play sounds with the calibration that gets activated in infant friendly mode. And that just helps the little babies to focus on the images we're showing them in order to calibrate. We can also show or hide a grid. Allowing to use previous calibration data lets the participants select if they have already calibrated their equipment for eye tracking and they know that they are in the same lighting, same position. Um, they do not have to redo the calibration if they don't want to. So you can select or deselect this. During testing, um, I personally would recommend to leave this on because you as the researcher don't want to keep doing an eight minute calibration five times over when you're trying to test your experiment. So I would leave that activated for yourself, if nothing else. We can also choose to redo the calibration if the error is too high, and you can specify the error further down on this page. We can show an initial test video stream, which just shows the participant themselves doing the video. And then we can also choose to show or hide this option, this share calibration data with LabVanced to improve eye tracking. Just a quick reminder, the only thing that we record from eye tracking that we get to see is just coordinate data. We do not save recordings of people's videos. We do not watch recordings of people's videos. We are only looking at that numeric XY coordinate data and the percent error, which is also just a number, no videos are saved. In fact, you as the researcher don't even see the video. So we have something special called the virtual chin rest. And what that is, is it's essentially like your chin is resting on a little stand in front of the camera. So it's a position that you set yourself as a participant not as the researcher, the participant sets it for themselves. And that is where they will stay, hopefully, during the experiment. So you can choose to check this chin rest during trials, between trials, and then between trials, but you show the ignore button. This is what we recommend for um, infant friendly mode because we do want them to try and stay in the same spot, but we know that the parent or caretaker or the experimenter is probably going to have to just ignore that they are not in the exact same spot. Um, but what we also can do here is if the participant does a sudden movement during the trial, the experiment will actually pause. That's for this option. The experiment will pause until they have regained their correct position. The chin rest constraint is going to be how strict um, we examine this chin rest. So if I shift slightly, is that going to cause the experiment to pause or not? You can choose here. Infant friendly mode is going to go ahead and pick very loose. Um, I would say go with, you know, something in the middle, but it depends on what you're using your eye tracking for. We can also choose the calculation mode and actually clicking see detailed comparison is going to give you a very nice color coded table 
and this will help you decide which mode you would like to use. We would say um, there's good and bad for all of them, so definitely take a look at this and see what works for your study. We also have some minimum performance requirements, and you as the researcher get to set this. This is going to determine which participants are allowed to continue, depending on how fast their computer can refresh, or um, it's the number of face processings per second. So I would recommend reading this very closely. We can also do some head tracking and things like that, but these are going to be your main um, eye tracking settings. Okay? So let's go back to the task editor. This is just a little intro um, to this eye tracking performance test, which is a task that I have loaded into my account. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual task. So the first thing you need to do is go into this physiological signals menu, and you need to actually enable eye tracking for the task. For each task that you want to perform eye tracking on, you do have to click this enable button. Just because you activated eye tracking for the study does not mean it is enabled for every single task. If we go back to this intro task, you'll see that eye tracking and head tracking are not enabled, which means that on this frame, no gaze data is being recorded. The gaze data is only going to be recorded for tasks that you have selected this button for. So once you have selected enable eye tracking, you're going to get a bunch of options here. This is where you can choose the number of calibration points that are going to appear um, in between the trials, and then how often you should show a, like a larger recalibration. So every seven trials, it's going to recalibrate using three points, or we can use six points for this calibration here. So there's several different options here. And then what we can do is we can do some drift calculations. This, so this is going to adapt um, this error calculation at the end here. So several different options, but that all has to do with how accurate you need things to be. This experiment is actually a test of accuracy. So we have some pretty strict settings going on here. As you can see, I'm gonna have five trials and I have three frames per trial. And what we're doing in this task is we're just asking the participant to always fixate on the circle no matter where it jumps to on the frame. So let's walk through some events here. So what I've done is I've created essentially circles that the participant needs to fixate on. So let's take a look at our events. We've got a frame start event. What we're going to do is we're going to change the width of a circle. This is not strictly eye tracking, this is just for this study. And then we also have a random drawing number, which is going to determine the position of the circle whose width we just changed. So let's go to the eye tracking event here. That's what we're looking at. So this is going to be a gaze recording event. I'm recording the gaze position in X and Y coordinates. The trigger type is eye tracking gaze. So let's pause here and let's look at some of our different eye tracking triggers that we have. We have two specifically for eye tracking. We have eye tracking gaze and eye tracking fixation, which says beta next to it, but it is pretty well developed. With eye tracking gaze, we can choose to only trigger when looking at specific elements. And what this does is it brings up a list of targets that are on the frame that you can pick from. So again, that would mean that I have to be gazing within the borders of an element in order to trigger the action. Let's look at eye tracking fixation. It's gonna be very similar, same thing, but it works in a slightly different way. So let's look at the action we have set up. What I'm doing here is when the eye tracking starts, which is on frame start, I am going to be recording um, several different arrays here. So I have a coordinate x, y array, and then I'm actually going to be recording the error calibration. All right. So the most common thing for eye tracking is to use the eye tracking gaze trigger, and the action is going to be one or more set record variable actions, because the point of eye tracking is to record lots of data from your participant. 
The other event I have here is just an offset gaze correction. So this is a little bit more complicated than typical. This is what you're typically going to see here. And then my last event is just gonna be on frame end. We're doing another offset calibration. And of course we have some JavaScript here. So this is uncommon, okay? This is going to be specifically for this study, um, but I recommend if you're curious about like doing some strict accuracy testing, this would be the study to download. This is our um, accuracy test, and I will link that in the description. So let's create another eye tracking event, just so you can see kind of what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna set eye tracking gaze as my trigger, and I'm gonna show you some different actions here. So we're going to go down a little bit here. We have some custom actions. We can do a JavaScript if that is what you're interested in. But the other thing we can do is going to be this set record variable. When I click on the pencil under the set record variable action, because I have eye tracking gaze as my trigger, when I hover over this trigger option, I get tons of different eye tracking things that I can record. So we can do a simple scalar XY. So this would be one variable for each. I can do an XY array. I can do the name and information of what they're looking at. I can do the time that they're looking at that and the gaze confidence. So that's kind of like a measure of dispersion. And then I can do different arrays with each of those. We recommend doing an XYTC array. That's gonna give you the most information. I can also do a timestamp that they started looking and the time from frame onset that they started looking. So Unix time is gonna be that global time clock. From frame onset is probably going to be like a millisecond measure from when the frame started. So here is all of the options that I can do once I have that eye tracking gaze trigger selected. So again, most common thing with eye tracking is set record variable, and people typically grab as many of these as they can, essentially. Um, I would say the XYTC array is a very good place to start. Okay, so that is um, the typical eye tracking event that goes on here. As you can see, we have lots of variables, and some of these are specific to this study in particular. These are just some images that show what the calibration process looks like um, for the participant in an eye tracking study. So this is going to be the first bit that they see is this processing check. And what we're looking at is a blue face mesh that appears over their video. And it's supposed to match up to their face pretty closely. And what the participant is looking for is to make sure that when they move, the face mesh moves with them. The next thing they're going to see is some restrictions we have for our eye tracking. So you should be in a quiet room, you shouldn't be rushed, and you probably shouldn't be wearing your glasses. This is due to the blue light coating that a lot of people's glasses have. That is going to mess with the eye tracking because what the um, laptop or computer webcam is looking for is kind of that pupil shine, essentially. So you should be well lit. Um, hopefully the light is in front of the participant shining on their face, and it is going to look for their eyes. So if you have a blue light coating on your glasses, that's probably going to mess up. The other thing is we want you to be sitting fairly close, um, typically 60 centimeters from your computer. The next thing they're going to see is this center pose set. So in this example, Casper is away from his center pose. So the center pose is represented by the green face mesh and he is the blue. So what he's done is he's shifted away to kind of show an example. So he has set this as his virtual chin rest or center pose and that is where the experiment expects him to stay. So if he moves away from this, if I have it in my settings that the experiment is going to pause, then it will pause until the blue lines up with the green. The last thing they're going to see is the actual calibration. For this example, um, where this picture was taken, the background of the study was black, but if you have just the plain white backgrounds, then you will see um, these little dots are going to be black on a white background, but you will still see the red circle. 
So what the participant does is they look at the red circle as it shrinks to the size of the little dot, and then the red circle will move to each of these gaze points and continue to shrink. Um, and those are essentially recording fixation data as you move through the calibration. So now let's take a look at some eye tracking data. All right, so I am now in the data view and export tab for an eye tracking study. And this is that first tab that you see where you select the recordings, then you can select the variables you want and choose your export format. So I've selected um, one of the data sets and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click save and preview. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me the data exactly as I will see when I download it. So first I'm gonna have my session data, which is gonna be start and end time, the subject and some session tokens. Then I'm gonna have my trial data. But this is gonna show me the different trials that they went through. So it was a free viewing task, the trial ID, and basically the order that they went in. Then I'm going to have my gaze data. And this is the pure eye tracking numbers that you're really looking for here. So it is showing me the timestamp of when they were looking and where they were looking. That's what I was recording. And as you can see, there is a lot of gaze data. They were looking at this study for a good amount of time. The numbers are all pretty close together, but when you expand the column, you can see that they're different. Essentially, a lot of data here. This is also why it's very um, useful to go through these tabs and to make sure you're only downloading variables that you want to download. So when I click Save and Preview and I look at my gaze data here, this is exactly what I'm going to get in a spreadsheet when I download it. And all I have to do is click download and I will get exactly this. So this is what eye tracking data looks like um, for this free viewing task. It'll look slightly different from every task um, depending on what values you're recording. You may have a column of X and Y coordinates. You may have a column of X, Y, T, C. Um, essentially, whatever variable you programmed, each variable gets its own column. And that's what you're going to see here. So I hope this video was helpful. This is kind of a broad overview of eye tracking. And let us know if you have any questions.